Hi, my name is Chris and welcome to Battle Nonsense. This is a follow-up video to my Battlefield 4 netcode, the real delay video I've released a few days ago. I've been surprised in a very positive way about how much attention this video receives. But this is just proof that the issues I've been talking about there are a massive problem for the Battlefield community. On Reddit we also got a response from Vincent Vukovic, who is the community manager at DICE. I have already replied on Reddit, but I'd like to thank him again for writing a reply and forwarding the video to the group at DICE who is working on the issues. It is good to see that DICE is seeking the contact with the community and engages in discussions. As I wrote on Reddit, I don't make these videos with the intention to destroy the Battlefield franchise. I make them because I fell in love with the franchise when the Battlefield 1942 demo came out 12 years ago. It provided something new and fresh something many players were looking for at that time. I've also been active in the Battlefield 2 mod community as well as a Machinima director. So the reason why I make these videos here, where I put the issues in the spotlight, is because I love the franchise and I want to see it live on for much much longer. But this can only happen when the issues get fixed and not just shiny new features added. It is really great to see DICE employees reply to topics and talk with the community. However, there's been a lot of talk since the first Battlefield game on the Frostbite engine has been released and now with Battlefield 4 the hit rack and netcode issues reached a new climax. Next steps from DICE have to be action, not words. These issues we talk about since so many years need to get fixed and by fixed I mean really fixed, not patched up to be as good or as bad as Battlefield 3. We really need a reliable hit registration and sync with the game world. The community won't swallow these fundamental issues forever. So what do I want to talk about today? In the comments on YouTube and Reddit there were questions asked like why don't they just update the tick rate? As well as comments posted which said that in a game as complex as Battlefield 4 you can't have a higher tick rate because that causes too much traffic. This then got me thinking. How much data is actually sent back and forth between client and server? As I could not find any answer when I asked Google, I decided to test this out. To measure the traffic, I'm using a little tool called NetLimiter. It is able to limit the traffic of applications and it also includes a firewall that allows you to completely block applications from accessing the internet. So first off, domination with 16 players. So when I ran this test I was quite surprised to see such low download and upload rates from Battlefield 4. The download rate stays below 5 KB most of the time and the upload rate also is about 3.5 up to 3.7 KB per second. This is really very low, but this is just 16 player domination, right? Let's see what happens when we play with 32 players Conquest Large. Now as you can see download and upload rate are still not very high. Upload rate is pretty much the same as before in Domination and the download rate did increase a bit to 8 KB per second. It will go up to about 10-11 KB in the following scenes. The Levolution event I triggered also does not have any impact on the download or upload rate. So now that we've seen Conquest with 32 players, let's have a look at Conquest with 64 players. And surprisingly download and upload rate stay pretty much the same as they were before with 32 players.
Now I know what you are thinking. There are not many projectiles flying around, not much action going on, and there are also not many particles flying around. So let's try something else. Domination with 64 players. 64 players, small map, a lot of projectiles, a lot of explosions, a lot of grenades, micro destruction. There's really a lot going on here right now on the screen. So you would guess that this would pretty much push the upload and download rates to the maximum. Yet as we see the download rate stays below 15 kilobyte per second and the upload rate is below 5 kilobyte per second. It is around 4 kilobyte most of the time. So as we've seen now in these tests, the download rate does increase the more players are on the server. The upload rate stays pretty much the same because the game is running at a tick rate of 10 ticks per second, so the client is sending out one update every 100 milliseconds. Based on these measurements, it seems strange that Battlefield 4 is only running at a tick rate of 10. If you would increase it to 30, then we would look at a download rate of 50 kilobyte per second and the upload rate of about 20 kilobyte per second maximum. A user suggested that increasing the tick rate would create more CPU load. While it would be true that more data will need more CPU power to process, I think that it might not make much of a difference. Because when you send out one update every 100 milliseconds to the server containing information about what you did, then this means that the server and the other clients essentially see you running around as in a video with 10 frames per second. But we don't see a slideshow on our screens, right? This is because Battlefield 4 is filling in the gaps between those updates. It tries to predict what you are going to do and smooths out the gaps between the updates that are sent. Where I am getting with this is that the calculations need processing power. So if you increase the tick rate, then there is more data and because of that the game needs to do less calculations to fill in the gaps. Now this is mainly me guessing, but I think that it does make sense. But then why stick to a tick rate of 10? Maybe I'm just wrong with my assumption. But then I remembered that some time ago I read about Microsoft and Sony having strict guidelines in place which tell developers what they can and what they can't do in their games they want to release on their consoles. After some digging I found it. It is called TCR, which stands for Microsoft's Technical Certification Requirements. These describe what is required to get your game certified to be released for the Xbox 360. This document comes with the development kit and is usually not available for the world to read. However, I found it on a website, the link is in the description. In this document, two sections are very interesting. TCR 96 describes console to console connections and TCR 97 describes console to data center hosted server connections. Battlefield is using dedicated servers, so we are interested in TCR 97. The requirement reads, console to data center hosted gameplay must not be disconnected as long as the following performance conditions are maintained. Each console has an upstream and downstream bandwidth of 40 kilobytes per second or higher. 300 milliseconds or less round trip latency, 10% or less packet loss in a 10 second interval, 2% or less packet loss in general. Since I did the measurements in kilobyte and not in kilobit, we need to quickly convert this value so we get a limit of 5 kilobyte per second. Now what this requirement wants to tell us is that you must design your game in a way so that a player who has an upload and download rate of 5 kilobyte per second and a ping of 300 milliseconds to be still able to play the game. This is the worst case scenario you have to expect and support. So you cannot use a tick rate in your game which would require that the gamer has at least 20 kilobyte per second upload and download rate. You cannot start to kick players who have a ping higher than 200 milliseconds from the game server. Simply because Microsoft says that this is the requirement for you, for your game, to be able to publish it. As I've said earlier, this document is not available for everyone to read. It's just distributed with the development kits. 
So I don't know if there is a newer version of this document where those limits were lifted. So you could design a game and have it require a higher upload rate. However, when we are looking at Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 and what kind of upload and download rates they are using, then I think that the values in this document are still up to date. Otherwise, DICE would have increased their tick rates and we would have higher upload rates. Also in the Microsoft forums, there are recent discussions going on mainly from indie developers where the exact same numbers are mentioned as in this TCR document. So they seem to be up to date. So how should DICE even increase the tick rate? They are already pushing the TCR to the max on the console. I don't know if the limits were increased for the Xbox One and what the limits of the PlayStation 4 are. But if there is a similar TCR in place, then on console you are pretty fucked. It's quite a miracle that DICE pulled off this tick rate. Because I read from a MotoGP developer that they could only run the game with 4 ticks in their 16 player multiplayer. Or the indie devs are struggling greatly with this limit. You just need to read the related forums. I could not find the TCR for the PlayStation 3 because it wasn't leaked online, but I imagine it would be quite similar to Microsoft's TCR for the Xbox 360. So the TCR seems to explain why the tick rate of 10 has been there since Bad Company 1. However, what it does not explain is why the same tick rate is present on the PC. Why didn't Bad Company 2 or Battlefield 3 or Battlefield 4 use a higher tick rate, like at least 30? Maybe it's because DICE thought that a tick rate of 10 is good enough. Maybe they didn't want to put in the extra effort because there are other subsystems that are tied to the 10 Hz tick rate. And if you increase it, all hell would break loose. Uh, like this. Or like Need for Speed Rivals running two times as fast on 60 frames per second than with the 30 frames per second to which it is locked per default. So increasing the tick rate will increase upload and download rates. Which means that people with very poor internet connections might no longer be able to play Battlefield. If it's not possible to increase the tick rate to 60 per default because DICE and EA fear that they would cut out too many players from playing Battlefield, then at least increase it to 30 and offer the game server provider the option to increase the tick rate even higher to 60 or 100. This would especially be useful for eSport, for tournaments, for events. But I think that also clans and communities would jump on that option. So that's it from me. These are my findings and thoughts about the magical tick rate of 10 in Battlefield. Please let me know what you think about this topic in the comments. And I see you next time.